Yeah, good afternoon, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. I just want to do a, uh, a quick video to do a bit of an update on sort of where I'm at and sort of some of the experience, experiments I've been doing over the last couple of days. It's been quite insightful and um, I'm thinking I'm sort of more so getting a better idea of uh, where I might want to go with this particular project. So at the moment, um, you'll recall I've been playing around with um, this sort of setup that I've had uh, for quite some time, a couple of pieces of 50 ohm coax and just using the sheath um, as the, the parallel conductor sensing both the forward and reverse um, power. A um, couple of 1N uh, 34As there uh, doing the detecting and a couple of um, 10 nanofarad capacitors. Um, that DC voltage is coming back through down to our, our, um, our circuit which is doing two things. Um, a little, and I'll, I'll, I'll do a picture in a sec. Um, so just doing some signal conditioning. I'll probably, probably be able to put it for now. So at the moment, what I've been sort of playing around with is the idea of using um, a simple LM358 in the configuration of a log amp. Um, that's where I've got a, a 1N34 uh, providing in the, in the feedback path, and then a 10K ohm resistor on the, on the forward. And there's an analog circuits um, design note that talks about um, how this works. So I've got um, so what I was looking to do was to to um, put those very logarithmic curves we saw in the first video through the log amp to straighten them out, and then through some kind of DC amp um, moving forward. Uh, so a couple of things I'll cover. Let's just talk about the log amp first, and I'll come back to the DC amp. So as we saw. Um, in the first uh, video that the uh, results we saw by frequency at the very low frequency we saw uh, a, a slight uptick and at the much higher frequencies we saw uh, a much more or a greater V out um, for for power at the higher frequencies. Putting it through the log amp it was certainly very noticeable that um, now you get um, a much straighter line um, not a huge variation at all which we'll see in a sec um, now, uh, there's, there's two ways you can do these, um, these log amps. One uses a, a diode, uh, and that typically, for my experiments, uh, you had, um, if you look here, an output log range for, for my particular directional coupler of 7.49 uh, to 7.59, so a, a 100 millivolt variation uh, across all the frequencies and all the powers, so that's from 100 uh, milliwatts through to 10 watts, so not a huge variation at all. Uh, when I tried the die, uh, say again, not the diode, the BJT um, in place of the diode, uh, which is another configuration, then that was uh, even less variation again. So it was it was just about dead flat. Um, and according to literature, you can get around 120 dB. Uh, from the BJT, whereas the diode you're sort of talking uh, 30 to 40 dB uh, range. So at the moment I've sort of stuck with uh, the diode which we see here in the circuit and um, as I just mentioned before, so the output of that log amp, what I'm seeing in my particular configuration here is a voltage variation of 7.49 to 7.59 or in other words 100 millivolts um, variation, like I say, across uh, all the powers and all the frequencies. And what I, what I thought about, I'd try and do, go, right, well I need to feed that into the Arduino, so I need to condition that and amplify that um, a lot more than it currently is. So if I was to strip away the 7 volts, and I'm doing that by applying a fixed DC through to the inverting input, so through two 10, ohm, uh, so again, two 10 ton um, helipots, um, I can strip away that 7 volts and I'm just left then with 100 millivolts. And if I wanted to uh, uh, maximize the input to the Arduino, then I want to get um, the maximum output to be around 5 volts out of these two amplifiers here. So I've just notionally gone 5 volts divided by 100 millivolts equals 50. And if I was to um, set our input resistor here to be 10K, then my R2 needs to, that's the feedback resistor here, in the region of 500 ohms, say again 500k ohms, uh, of which I'm trying out a 560k. 
Uh, and as I just mentioned here, and I've just written down here, just using those two trimmer pots to to essentially take away or subtract um, that seven volts fixed output. And, and, and by all accounts, it's working reasonably well. So if we were to sort of go back to here and should be able to get both uh, uh, both meters in there. So this meter here is, is reading the output of the uh, forward power. And this one here is reading the output of the reflected power. Um, they're not reading exactly the same at the moment. There's no transmission going through. If I was to adjust those heli pots, then I could try and get them closer together. But at the moment, this is just really for test purposes. And uh, to be fair, um, not unsurprising uh, given the gain of those two amplifiers at the back of the um, circuit that you know, a, a, a slight change in those trim pots uh, equals a reasonably high uh, change in the output. But either way, that aside, um, if we were to, say, transmit, and uh, we should be able to see, oh, I can't get both in, but I'll bring it up to uh, bring the power slowly up and we'll be able to see uh, what the, the impact is. So it's the key now. It's slowly coming up. It's coming up through one watt. That's about five odd watts. And then uh, up around there should be that's sort of four and a half divisions odd. That's sort of about 10 watts, 10 watts there. So that's a 14 megs. If we were to transmit the same thing at 21 megs, um, this, uh, this radio here, I can't actually get the full 10 watts out, so I might have to look into that one. But either, even if the, uh, yeah, the, the 5.6 odd watts I can get out, you can see considerably more output there. Uh, and if I was to unkey that, and then start to introduce some um, some reflected power coming in, which we'll see over here on the meter. If I was to start to uh, tune off the tuner, I can then start to introduce a bit of reflected power, and then we'll see the um, the other meter start to climb. So yeah, like I say, um, it's it's uh, it works, um, but I would have to say, in all honesty, that. Um, I'm not overly happy. Um, it's at the moment in its current configuration, it is very simple. Um, it is too simple. Um, as we're seeing there, in fact, I'll just do it now. If I was to drop this down to, if I just bring the screen up a bit, down to three and a half megs, so down the 80 meter band, um, we'll key. And there we are actually well in excess of uh, 10 watts and, you know, really getting very little power, a little. Uh, little output coming out there so um, you, you'd have to modify the circuit to have essentially uh, more amplification on the output here um, I would say um, certainly frequency so by band you need more amplification and I think certainly down at the 100 milliwatts uh, that was sort of a you know a bit of a, an aiming point uh, you need to have more amplification again so then you start, you start getting into a situation where, well I've already got, that's one LM358, so each LM358 has two op amps in it. There's another one, such so as we can see here, one and two. Um, and what I did find I had to do was to bring the input um, through uh, through a uh, another op amp acting as a buffer. Um, I found that if I was feeding the output of the directional coupler straight into the log amps that um, while it worked it didn't perform terribly well and I was getting better performance by having that going through a um, a buffer amp made out of, again out of an LM358 as a voltage follower uh, feeding into the log amps. Um, I was, I've, I've played around with a couple of different values, I've, I've played around with um, 100 K ohms um, across the DC coming in. Um, I've also played around with just sort of looking at some of the other literature online, um, one meg ohms, um, as well as a meg ohm in series and a meg ohm in parallel. All different sort of variations, just playing around to find out what was the best um, configuration. And I and I have to say, um, not one of those was better than the rest. But um, I will say that in this particular configuration. Um, having that buffer ramp was uh, was certainly better. So, in terms of 
uh, a bit of a status um, in terms of where I'd like to go with this moving forward. Um, I think in order to make this actually really useful for um, the HF bands and across a reasonable range of power, so that sort of QRP plus up to say, say 10 watts, um, I would have to add, um, I'm not going to say significantly, but certainly quite a bit more um, circuit to really condition the signal to get a decent output that could then be ultimately fed into the the Arduino to be then um, displayed. Which then starts to beg the question, is it really worth it? Um, is it really worth to, to you know, just about double this, if not triple this, in terms of complexity, to to get a, um, a signal suitable for for going into the, um, the Arduino? So, with that in mind, so setting that aside, um, I think here, um, I will look at the um, the AD8307. Um, I think uh, it just makes good sense, having now tried this, you know, gave it a go, and um, in the absence of anything, any sort of silver bullet, I think the AD3307 is a, it's a purpose-built chip, um, and has been used many times before by many others, so uh, I think I will go ahead and probably order a couple of those, um, and then um, give that a go. I'm just debating if I need to have three of them, so two for uh, the forward and reverse, and then the third one for power. I think at this stage, again, I don't need to. I'll just use the forward power somehow, if I get the calibration right, um, to be the transmitted power. So the actual transmitted power to the antenna, I'm thinking will be the um, forward power minus the reflected power, so the actual power that's been delivered. Um, and then I can just get away with the two 8307s. I think in terms of the directional coupler, um, this arrangement here, personally, I think uh, when you think of it in the context of two cheap little V meters and the variable pot there, it's a double pot, um, actually worked very well in that configuration, um, in the HF band that is. Uh, and I'd probably leave that and just push that to one side as, as you know, well, I don't know, I'll, I'll maybe do some with it down track. I think what I'd like to do now, if I am going to move through to the 8307 route here, um, I think I might uh, revert to a better pickup for HF, and I think I'm going to go with the um, that patented, well, one or two ways, definitely toyroid based. Um, I think the power levels I'm talking about, um, potentially uh, an FT37-43, if not uh, one size larger. Um, and I'm either thinking about having the the configuration, and I can't remember who the patent patent was, um, a Carl Sothenheimer, I think it was, uh, back in 1969, painted uh, that dual arrangement where there was two. Oops, that's the meter turning off. Uh, where there were two toroids. Um, just talking with the idea of using that arrangement, or maybe just sticking with the one toroid. Um, with a tapped center turn, so quite a large uh, secondary winding, center tapped, and then picking off both the forward and reverse from the one from the one toroid. So we might give that a go. So I think um, I'll have to order a few parts. Uh, that'll take a bit of a while to get in, so I might sort of shift my focus to uh, to something else. But that is the way ahead. Um, I think this has certainly been a, a useful exercise and, a, and an interesting exercise. Um, I've never played around with these log amps before, uh, and it was quite really interesting to see um, the huge variation in input voltage, and I was ranging from essentially zero through to uh, a good 12, 13, 14 volts going in, and then having coming out that sort of 7.49 to 7.59 uh, odd volts coming out. Um, so you could really see the, uh, the logarithmic amplification going on there. So that was certainly interesting. Uh, and also to see the difference between um, the diode there and the 8304. Um, that I, so 06, sorry, that I was playing around with. Um, yeah, certainly uh, quite a difference there. Um, right, so I think that pretty well covers off what I wanted to do. Like I say, it was just a, a, an opportunity to do a bit of a catch-up. Um, on so where I've got to and 
some of the issues and it's come out in some of the comments in previous videos that you know the warts and all is, is, is of interest um, so uh, if people can learn from that or can um, you know provide some advice and that's that's fine you know no problems at all but anyway I'll say 73 is there and uh, start looking around where I can get some of these uh, these parts for the uh, the next build anyway 73 is all and um, take care